How long? How long? How long? We are 14 weeks into the coronavirus lockdown. I wonder how many times you've asked that question. How long, Lord? How long? Time flies when we're having fun, but the hours seem to have crawled by for many of us in lockdown. It's easy to put up with something like this when we can see light at the end of the, the tunnel, or we can see the end in sight. But the problem is, is that for much of this long down, lockdown, the end has never been in sight. Short, sharp trials can often be bearable, but long-term trials are really hard, are really difficult. In today's reading, the psalmist seems to be feeling as if he's been abandoned by God in his own lockdown. It feels as if the troubles that he's having have simply slipped God's mind. How long, says David, how long, Lord, have you, have you forgotten me completely? How long? God seems just hidden from David. I can't see you. You seem to have forgotten me. Could you just have the courtesy of telling me when you're going to respond, when I'm going to hear from you again? How long am I going to be in this lockdown? Will you speak? Will you act? I'm in pain, and I thought you cared. Now, I've spoken with a few people who have felt this way at different times. As a pastor, people have asked me, where is God in all of this? Whatever this is, whether it's lockdown today or circumstances in the past, why is my life simply falling apart? Why has God abandoned me? I don't think I will ever forget the day that I walked into the hospice to see mum in her journey home to her heavenly father. She'd had a sleepless night and she was asking this question, how long? Why has God abandoned me? Why won't he take me home? Why am I still here? How long? How long? Maybe you feel tired today. The crisis, the coronavirus crisis and the lockdown has disrupted our sleep patterns. Maybe you're a business owner and you're looking at the economic future and thinking, how long, how long can I go on for? How long is this downturn going to last? Maybe you're having sleepless nights. Maybe you're worried about your health or the, the health of a loved one and you're thinking, how long? It's dragging the energy out of me. God, how long? How long? Maybe you're dealing with a long-term illness and there seems to be no end in sight. Maybe you're long-term unemployed and you'll think you'll never get another job. Maybe you're caring for someone with dementia and you're telling them the same thing over and over again every day and you think, how long, Lord? How long will my loved one be trapped in this terrible disease? Maybe your career has stalled and you're thinking to God, how long? The road is long, but how long? Maybe there's a problem in your family. Maybe today you have to be honest and say your marriage is on the rocks, that actually this long lockdown has just produced argument after argument. Maybe you're concerned about a child or a grandchild. Maybe the tension has been building in your house over the past 14 weeks and you are screaming out to God as David is in this psalm, how long, Lord, how long? I'm pretty sure that there are many people and, it has to be said, many Christians who have sometimes felt this way. I feel abandoned by God, forgotten by him. But they would never say it out loud, not, not even to their spiritual leader. Because you see, we've been taught that, that good Christians never feel this way. 
True Christians always experience the good life, always experience the, the victorious life. And so if we were ever to say it out loud, I feel abandoned by God, I feel forgotten by God, then we would worry that Christians, other Christians would look down on us and think, well, what on earth have you done wrong that God has abandoned you and forgotten you? So we keep up appearances. We keep the mask up over our face. We keep our questions and our doubts to ourselves, but we cannot shake the feeling that God has forgotten us. Why? Why do we feel that way? Why do we feel that we can't express our doubts and our fears and our, and our feelings of abandonment by God on occasions? Because that's not the example that we see in today's reading. David isn't afraid to ask this question. How long, God, you seem to have forgotten me. How long will you forget me? Look at verse one. Oh, Lord, how long will you forget me forever? How long will you look the other way? There is this feeling in David's words of profound abandonment. This isn't just a few weeks of lockdown. This seems permanent. A permanent lockdown, a forever lockdown. God, you seem to have forgotten me forever. You seem to be in a state of complete forgetfulness about me. You have completely and utterly abandoned me. And I am screaming out to you, how long? This is God we're talking about. David's creator, David's provider and sustainer. But he seems completely hidden from him. And David feels desolate and alone. And what's worse, there doesn't seem to be any reason why God has rejected to him. David can see nothing in his life at this moment, at this time, that would mean that God would walk away from him. And because of that, it leaves him struggling. He's wrestling in his soul. Why would God treat me this way? This is, this is profound turmoil. I'm pretty sure it's round the clock turmoil. David would have tossed and turned in the wee small hours saying, "What? why has God abandoned me this way? And then he would have spent the day time sitting in his despair, wondering why no answers come. Why will God not answer me? How long, Lord? This psalm is a heartfelt prayer. David has, has laid himself bare before God. He's made himself vulnerable before God. He said what no good Christian should ever think or say, or at least so we think. So what do you expect God's answer to this prayer to be? I'm sorry, David. I am still here, David. I haven't forgotten you. I haven't abandoned you. Well, in this psalm, God does not answer. He remains silent. He remains hidden. David doesn't get release, relief. He doesn't get closure. His doubts and his despair remain. God isn't picking up the phone. God isn't answering the Zoom call. God isn't commenting in the social media posts. David has knocked on the door of heaven, but the door of heaven remains firmly shut. God remains silent. God really does seem to have abandoned him. So maybe God can forget us after all. But no, God cannot forget. He couldn't forget David. He couldn't forget his people. And he cannot forget you. Speaking to the nation of Israel in exile, God's people who feel forgotten, abandoned by him in a strange country, the prophet Isaiah writes, never can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for the child she has born? But, but even if that were possible, I would not forget you. See, I have written your name on the palms of my hands. Always in mind is a picture of Jerusalem's walls in ruins. Isaiah says, can a mum ever forget her baby? And we reply, of course not. 
But as I was saying, it is more likely that a mother would forget the child that she has born than it is that God would ever forget you. He's written your name on the palm of his hands. It's never going to happen. That phrase, he's written your name on the palm of his hands, seems to be some kind of allusion to some kind of religious um, ancient tattooing work. God has tattooed your name on the palm of his hands. This is God, your creator, holy, divine God. And he's inscribed your name on the palm of his hands. That's beyond amazing, isn't it? God will not forget you. And if you're not yet convinced by that, then his son, Jesus Christ, came to earth in bodily form, God the Son, and said precisely the same thing. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, he says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I will not forget you. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And yet the psalmist believes otherwise. And maybe, if you're honest this morning, you may well feel otherwise too. Maybe you feel that God has forgotten you this morning. Maybe you've, you've never known God, and so you feel it's too late. Surely God has walked away from you by now. Maybe you realise you've never been in a true relationship with, with him before, and you think it's too late. Maybe you feel unworthy. Maybe you feel the fact that, that God has abandoned you and walked away from you is your, is your fault, that it must have been something that you've done. Uh, maybe some sins in your, in your past life or even your present life that would stop you from having a relationship with God. And you feel angry and paralysed and in despair. Or maybe you've been walking with God for, for many years along many miles, but today you feel that because of your circumstances, whatever they are, God seems distant. He's a long way away. He's hidden. Sometimes the righteous do suffer, and God can seem a very long way away. Maybe today you feel like you're, you're relying on yourself, relying on your own energy, relying on your own uh, skills, relying on your own talents to get you out of whatever circumstances you find yourself in. And you feel like you need to be in control because God has left you. He's not in control and he's let you go and make your own way in the world. Hear this morning that the psalm doesn't end this way. The psalm doesn't end with the question, how long? But with words of confidence and joy. And here's the important thing. Confidence and joy, despite the fact that God still seems to be silent. Verses 5 and 6 say, But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. How does David do that? It seems to me to be to do with David's big but. But I. God's silence is ringing in my ears, and yet I make a choice to shout out. Despite all this, but despite my circumstances, I will trust. I choose to trust. I will rejoice. I choose to rejoice. I will sing. I choose to sing. How does David find the strength to make that choice? Well, it has everything to do with God's unfailing love for David and nothing to do with his own strength. He remembers the continual and unending love of God. 
he reviews his life and he sees so many past blessings in it and he pro proclaims god is good to me i look back over my life and i see god is good to me i trust in god because he has been good in my life he has demonstrated his unfailing love for me and he will do so again because of what God has done in his life in the past, David trusts him from his, for his present and for his future. He looks forward by faith to the blessings that he knows and trusts and hopes will come. Real hope will give you real joy, even when you're in real trouble. Shall I say that again? Real hope will give you real joy, even when you're in real trouble. God's promises are so real and so big that they change everything. Hope in God may not change your circumstances, but if you believe his promises, then you will be filled with the joy of what is to come. If you feel that God has forgotten you today, then, then that experience is real and painful and more Christians, myself included, understand how you are feeling and probably ought to be more honest about it on more occasions. Don't be afraid to ask God questions. Don't be afraid to speak out your doubts to him. Complain to him. Shout at him in anger if you need to. That's the example of the Psalms. But God is worth holding on to in faith, even when you don't feel him near you. He has not forgotten you. He cannot forget you. Your name is written on the palm of his hands. His love is a love that will never let you go. Oh,